50, 60 years ago when I first came to this institution, ecology was a rather minor and not very well respected subdivision of biology. And so all of us who taught and did ecology were members of biology departments. I was a member of the zoology department here. And so what has changed now so radically is uh, ecology is no longer just a subdivision of biology, and but is now a, a standalone science. And it has emerged to cons- and it considers now e- as much as the organisms are still part of it, but it considers the physical environment because as soon as you get to talking about how environment works, not what it looks like, as soon as you get to talking about the, the way it functions size, then you have to get into physical sciences because this involves energetics, mineral cycling, earth sciences, climate, and all the other things. So ecology now is as much study of the physical environment as is the biological environment, and then now Humans are everywhere, and there's no place in the world you can go that humans don't have some kind of influence on it. And so we now uh, give equal attention to the human aspects, the humanities, social, social sciences, anthropology, and so on, which become very closely related here. And so uh, it's interesting. Uh, we really now uh, I never understood why early colleges didn't pay any attention to the uh, origin, the origin of the word. The word ecology comes from a Greek word oikos, which means household. And so ecology should be the study of households. And for years it wasn't. The, the ecology didn't study the whole household. They just studied the organisms running around. And, that, and the environment was just a stage that had no change. In other words, the organism interact in this stage. You see. Now we know the stage is interacts with the organisms. It's just like you had a stage play and all of a sudden the, the stage came out and said, wait a minute, don't do that, or let's do this, work together, you see. So, so now we realize, you see, that uh, organisms uh, not only respond in adapted environment, but even more exciting is that they change the environment, not only just humans. Microbes, of course, made the environment the way it is by putting oxygen in the air, the first things, <laughs> cyanobacteria, first green, green microorganism. Uh, put oxygen in the air, and that changed everything for everybody. So, so that that's very important. Now, then it really was the, this realization of the new ecology, as I call it, really came to fruit uh, in the 60s when the astronauts. This is a picture here of the Earth as seen from the Moon, and the whole Earth. See, in the 60s, when the astronauts got outside, and especially when they went to the moon and turned around and took pictures of the Earth, now this is the first time in human history that people could see the whole Earth. Before that, nobody could see the whole Earth. All they could see, you know, was little places where they were envir- where the environment was. And, and the Earth here looks so fragile and so small, you know, and so alone and so different from anything else in space that we suddenly realize that, hey, this is, this is not an unlimited environment at all. There's, there's a limit here. We've got to be more careful. There's nothing like this anywhere. Uh, in no way we can all move to another planet because another planet won't, cannot maintain our kind of life. And so the result is then we had what we call a worldwide uh, environmental awareness. And everybody suddenly got excited and concerned about the environment. Now, after the 70s, um, the environment kind of got on the back burner as people became more concerned with economics and the welfare and Cold War and so on. But now, uh, as we come to the next millennium, the 21st century, now environment is going to come back and be a major issue. It's not quite yet an issue in politics, but it will get so pretty soon is our, our thing. All right, now, <coughs> well, the sort of subtitle of this talk here is is how uh, systems behavior change with scale. In other words, we're looking at everything now more as a system rather than just as a collection of pieces. We're trying to, the big picture, like a jigsaw puzzle is all put together, you see, and you, you can't tell what the big picture is by looking at any of the little pieces. And see, I mean, science tends to only look at pieces one at a time, and we tend to try to solve uh, solutions one problem at a time. And so the, the, um, the scale does matter. In other words, what, what you see in a small scale may be quite different what you see in a large scale. 
because you get new properties coming in when you put pieces together. So we orient the new ecology pretty much around the concept of levels of organization hierarchy. And this is something that uh, both nature and humans organize are organized pretty well in a hierarchical way. In other words, we have levels here. And this, of course, is one of, is a standard thing. It's been in my textbooks for years, uh, but many people don't really understand it. And then, in other words, this is this is the ecological hierarchy, and we go down here from molecules to the ecosphere, the whole Earth, and we got the organisms here in the middle. So from the organisms down. You have organs, or organs, tissues, cells, and molecules. From the organism up, you have populations, ecosystems, landscapes, uh, regions, and the ecosphere, the whole, whole biosphere, and so on. Now, the, the point we make, it's just not well known and not well understood, and I expect half the ecologists in the audience or in students would not be aware that in this case, scale, things do change with scale. And one thing, it changes how things are organized and how things are, are controlled. From, from this point down, we have what we call set point controls. That is, we have genes, hormones that, that may maintain things in the steady state and, and control growth. For instance, when, you, when your liver gets to a certain size, the hormones and the genes turn off any further growth in size and you, you stop. Any further growth is cancer and will kill you. And so you have very tight controls of everything here. And we use the word homeostasis, which is an old physiological term meaning keeping things steady. Now, uh, when you get above this, you still have controls, but they're not set point. So we, call a, we talk about the controls from the organism up, the controls of ecosystems, landscapes, and regions, and the whole earth. Is, uh, there's no, no thermostat, no chemostat, no place to say this is enough, quit. So we don't have to worry about it in an individual. We can quit growing in size when it's time to quit growing in size. <laughs> and you don't worry about it, you just do it. And the rest of your life, is you don't grow in size, but you get better, better in quality. So you go from quantity to quality. And we're having a hard time getting that point over that society has to be, obey the same rules, that you can't keep on growing bigger all the time. Bigger is not better. At a certain point, bigger becomes not better, or diminishing returns of scale come in. It's hard to know where that point is, and we usually have to experience going a little too far and then coming back. And so we look forward to a bunch of overshoots, getting too many people here, too much cars there, or too much pollution here and there. And we, then we get that point, the human mind said, well, do something about it. So, so that our future then is going to be a bunch of booms and busts including the stock market <laughs> eventually. <laughs> and so we just better get ready, you know, and be able to deal with the fact and so on. Okay, so now, uh, so we, we, we create another Greek word. You know, scientists have to have Greek Greek words, to, <laughs> or Latin words. And so for the control systems at the higher levels, uh, we suggest the word homeoresis. Resis comes from rivers. And so rivers pulse. And so, so what we have here is steady state control. What we have here is what we call the pulsing paradigm. Uh, my brother and my son, and uh, so we're all ecologists, we, we, we decided we want a, a triple odom paper. So we have one now. It's called the pulsing paradigm. And it points out that the balance of nature is not a steady state. And you see, people say, don't hurt the balance of nature. Well, the balance of nature is a pulsing thing. But there are limits. In other words, you pulse too much up, then you pulse back down again. So we have the pulsing state.